Doom 64's art direction is a sight to behold. Compared to the originals, Doom 64's enemies look more grim, evil, and almost alien. Other than their looks, does their behavior differ from the original Doom games? As usual, let's start off with the zombie men. On the left side, we'll display the Doom 64 attributes, and on the right side, original Dooms. This way you can have a side-by-side -side comparison. Health, 20. Speed, hmm. This one is a bit weird to compare for all enemies. Doom 64's logic runs 15% slower than the originals. 30 ticks a second versus 35 ticks. The speed value is the same for both zombie men, but since the tick rate differs, the Doom 64 zombie man moves slower at 60 map units per second. Width, 64 map units. Height, 87 map units. Mass, 100. Pain chance, 80%. Pain time. Just like speed, the state durations are the same, but the tick rate makes the Doom 64 one last longer at 200 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. Its range attack deals 3 to 24 damage in multiples of 3. The Doom 64 assault rifle received an upgrade for sure. The bullet spread is 22 degrees. The Doom 64 shotgunner shares the exact same graphics as the zombie man, but a special palette flag changes the color of their pants so you can differentiate the two. Well, sometimes. During the heat of the combat, you won't know which zombie type you're fighting, trust me. Health, 30. Speed, 80 map units per second. Width, 64 map units. Height, 87 map units. Mass, 100. Pain chance, 68%. Pain time, 200 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. Its range attack fires 3 pallets, with each pallet dealing 3 to 15 damage in multiples of 3. The minimum damage is based on only one pallet hitting the target. Each pallet has a spread of 22 degrees. The Chain Gunner The Imp's next, looking more alien than ever. Health, 60. Speed, 80 map units per second. Width, 84 map units. Height, 94 map units. Mass, 100. Pain chance, 80%. Pain time, 135 milliseconds. Its melee attack deals 3 to 24 damage in multiples of 3. Since Doom 64's enemies are wider than the originals, the melee range for all enemies has been extended from 64 map units to 80. What's also interesting is that the Imp has unique animation for melee attacks, and they can whiff it this time. In the original Doom, an Imp would still toss a fireball if the player backed away from melee range. Its fireball attack deals 3 to 24 damage. The projectile travels at 300 map units per second and has a width and height of 12 and 8 respectively. On modern re-releases, when playing with fast mounts is enabled, their projectile speed is doubled to 600 map units per second. Doom 64 has a special variation of the Imp called the Nightmare Imp. These, just like the shotgunners, have a pallet flag set that changes their color. They are mostly the same as the regular Imp, except that their movement speed is doubled to 160 map units per second. Their pain chance also reduced from 80% to 50%. Their transparency is set to 70% for the extra nightmarish factor. Fun fact, they can infight regular Imps as they are classified as two different enemy types. Their projectors are also slightly different. The speed has been doubled to 600 map units per second. With fast monsters enabled, it increases to a whopping 1050 map units per second. Whoa, Nelly! The pinky is now more menacing than ever. Health, 150. Their internal speed value is actually higher than the original pinky. 12 versus 10. Even with the lower tick rate, this makes Doom 64 pinky slightly faster than the OGs at 180 map units per second. Width, 88 map units. Height, 100 map units. Mass, 400. Pain chance, 70%. Pain time, 135 milliseconds. The pinky's jump deals 4 to 40 damage in multiples of 4. I don't know if this is interesting, but Doom 64's idle animation runs at 8 ticks per frame rather than 10. It dances and plays slightly faster than its OG counterpart. With fast monsters enabled, its speed gets doubled to 360 map units per second. The duration of its jumping attack is also halved. But, unlike the original Turbo Pinky, its pain time stays the same. The chainsaw is still viable against Turbo Pinkies because of this. The Spectre is a pinky with the pallet flag set to change its appearance. It behaves exactly the same, except that its width is 100 instead of 88 for some reason. Its opacity will also change to 19% when it wakes up. It becomes opaque again when it dies. Oh boy, the lost soul. Some may say these are a lot more aggressive than the OGs. Is that true? Let's find out. Health, 60. Yep, they are weaker than the originals. 
speed 80 map units per second, fast boys, width 56 map units, height 64 map units, mass 50, pain chance 100%, pain time 200 milliseconds, it has no melee attack. Its ranged attack deals 3 to 24 damage in multiples of 3. Oh yeah, it has a fancy flame animation now compared to the boring slow 2 frame animation the original skull has. Looks pretty cool huh? Well, it will also cause some nasty side effects. If you've seen the monster aggressiveness analysis video, you know that the more often an enemy calls A chase, the more aggressive it becomes. It calls A chase every 3 ticks, has no melee state, and still has the distance check bonus programmed in. So the Doom 64 Lost Saul has a high chance to attack. It doesn't help either that its pre-charged tick duration is reduced to 6 ticks instead of 10 ticks, which is almost 100 milliseconds faster as well. Oh, speaking of attack speed, its charging speed has been increased from 700 map units per second to 1200. 1200. So yes, they are indeed far more aggressive than their original counterparts. Well, at least they die quicker. Their opacity is set to 75% and gets reduced to 19% as they die. They also count towards the kill count. The Kako Demon. It's got arms now. Very cursed. And also proper idle frames. And chasing frames. Whoa. Health 400. Speed 80 map units per second. Width 110 map units. Height 90 map units. Mass 400. Pain chance 50%. Pain time 400 milliseconds. Its melee attack still works the same with it having no actual melee state. The damage however is different. 8 to 64 damage in multiples of 8, whereas the original is 10 to 60 in multiples of 10. Its range attack deals the same damage, 5 to 40 damage in multiples of 5. The projectile speed however is 20 instead of 10, turning its projectile speed to 600 map units per second. The width and height are 12 and 8 respectively. With fast mounts enabled, the projectile speed gets boosted to 900 map units per second. Hell Knights have gotten really lanky in Doom 64. Health 500, speed 80 map units per second. Width 48 map units, height 100 map units, mass 1000, pain chance 17%, pain time 135 milliseconds. Its melee attack is even more devastating than the original. 11 to 88 damage in multiples of 11. Better stay out. Its range attack is exactly the same, except now it can also damage its third year brother. This way it can make Hell Knights and Barons infight. The projectile speed is 450 map units per second and has a width and height of 12 and 8 respectively. With fast monsters enabled, the projectile speed gets boosted to 600 map units per second. The Baron of Hell is a Hell Knight with 1000 health. A pallet flag is set to give the sunburnt appearance. Despite the different visuals, the projectiles also behave exactly the same as the Hell Knights'. The Arachnotron now has 6 legs instead of 4, one step close to being an actual spider. Health 500. Speed 120 map units per second, width 128 map units, height 80 map units, mass 600, pain chance 50%, pain time 200 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. Its ranged attack is completely different. First of all, its pre firing frame lasts for 500 milliseconds rather than 570. Its projectiles do 3 to 24 damage in multiples of 3, but it will always fire 2 at once. Instead of a continuous stream of plasma like the original, the Doom 64 Rakuchan shoots 5 pairs of projectiles, passes for 500 milliseconds for a refire check, then fires another 5 pairs if the target is still alive or in its line of sight. There is a 4% chance that after each shot, the shot count will not increment, causing the Rakuchan to possibly fire extra shots than the usual 5. And again after the 6th shot. In theory, the Arachnotron can shoot dozens of pairs if you're terribly unlucky. The Arachnotron Plasma Bolt travels at 715 map units per second and has a width and height of 26 and 8 respectively. The Pain Elemental. It's not the goofy meatball we used to know anymore. I mean, look at it! Health 400, speed 80 map units per second, width 110 map units, height 90 map units, mass 400, pain chance 50%. Pain time, 400 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. Hey, remember how annoying those pesky pain elementals were in Doom? Yeah? Well, in Doom 64 they spit not one, but two lost souls at you. Oh, I'm sure you can just prevent any lost soul from spawning by getting close to the pain elemental. Just like in the original, right? Look at that helpless little delinquent. No. 
Yeah, well, don't do that in Doom 64. Here, Lost Souls, if they fail to spawn in, for example, by spawning inside a player or a wall, they will freaking explode like an explosive barrel. 128 blast damage right in your face. And for the love of God, don't try to telefrag the three Lost Souls that spawn when the pain limit all dies. You will freaking die. Oh yeah, interesting thing. The Lost Soul limit has been reduced from 21 to 17 for Doom 64. Very arbitrary number again, don't you think? When the Pain Elemental dies, it will also lose 25% transparency for 3 frames in a row. The Revenant But wait, he is not completely forgotten. Their missiles still appear in the game as a level hazard. These move at 300 map units per second and have a width and height of 22 and 8 respectively. The homing capabilities only update half as much as the Revenants, but they can take sharper turns. What's interesting is that it will stop chasing you after 300 game ticks, so about 10 seconds. And yes, these bastards can also do 80 damage. The Mancubus. Health 600, speed 60 map units per second, width 120 map units, height 108 map units, mass 1000, pain chance 31%, pain time 200 milliseconds, it has no melee attack. Its range attack deals 8 to 64 damage in multiples of 8. Other than firing a bit slower than its classic counterpart, its first attack uses a slightly different angle offset. In Doom 2, one fireball is aimed at the player, the other one has an 11 degree offset. In Doom 64, this is 22 degrees. The second attack has a 22 degree offset, just like in Doom 2. The third attack is also the same as Doom 2, an offset of 5.6 degrees. The projectile travels at 600 map units per second and has a width and height of 12 and 8 respectively. The Archfall The Spider Mastermind. Oh no, she's not in the game. Anyway, the Cyber Demon. Lost a bit of weight, didn't you? He also has no idle frames anymore, so he just stands there, menacingly. Health 4000. Speed 120 map units per second. Yeah, notably slower. The walk frame lasts 4 ticks. In the original Doom, it's 3 ticks. Width 140 map units. Height 110 map units. Mass 1000. Pain chance 5%. Pain time, 335 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. Its range attack also remains the same, except this time it doesn't fire rockets from its crotch anymore. In fact, most enemies have an offset programmed in, but the projectile spawn origin matches the animation. Pretty cool little detail. The rockets however travel much faster, 900 map units per second. The width and height are 22 and 8 respectively. When the cyber demon dies, it freezes for a second as it spawns a bunch of explosions, then disintegrates. Oh yeah, there's a unique Cyberdemon variation that only appears once in Doom 64. He appears in the introduction cutscene when you boot up the game. Its stats are slightly different on the regular Cyberdemon, and it constantly shoots at the cutscene camera at a slower than usual frequency. If there's no camera, it will not attack at all. It also doesn't really have any states. If you kill it, it simply disappears. Speaking of the intro map, see those marines running around? Technically speaking, they're enemies too. If you pay good attention, the green Doom guy here is actually you. The map gave you invulnerability, so you can tank all the damage caused by the demons. Every entity here, except the cinematic cyber demon, is attacking you. Only infighting will cause a marine to change targets. But it's kind of sloppy that you can just see the player standing there like a lemon. Immersion ruined. Anyway, the marines we just saw are referred as player bots in the game. Health 100, speed 120 map units per second, width 64 map units, height 97 map units, mass 100, pain chance 99%, pain time 270 milliseconds. It has no melee attack. It does, however, have two different range attacks depending on the marine's color. The red and green marines fire a burst of six shots that can do 3 to 24 damage each, in multiples of three. The green player bot is never used however, and a pallet swap for a blue marine exists, but there's no player bot programmed in the game to use that skin. Probably a leftover of the scrapped multiplayer mode. The cyan marine also fires a burst of 6 shots, but these deal 3 to 15 damage each, in multiples of 3. For some strange reason, the red and green player bots will always chip when killed, no matter how they were killed. Probably so that the intro cutscene looks more violent? Now, what else do we got? Oh yeah, explosive barrels. Sometimes a friend, sometimes a hazard. Health, 20. 
speed none width 32 map units height 50 map units mass 100 no pain chance no pain time no attacks it explodes when it dies the end although this time it spawns an explosion rather than having its sprite having the explosion graphic and that's it right there are no wolfenstein guys no commander keens no romero hats well i suppose we can cover another enemy unique to doom 64 that's right, the Mother Demon, also known as the Resurrector, the final boss of Doom 64. Health 5000, speed 300 map units per second, width 160 map units, height 150 map units, mass 1000, pain chance 20%, pain time 600 milliseconds. She has no melee attack, but does have a melee state. What may sound strange is that she has no missile state. How does she attack then? Simple. She doesn't rely on the melee and missile states. When she's active, she does an attack check every 3 ticks. If the player is more than 600 map units away, she will never attack. If you get within the 600 map unit range, she will constantly attack until you're out of range again or dead. Does that mean you can just stay away as far as you can and shoot her until she dies? Well, maybe if you're really lucky with the pain chance, because triggering her pain state will also cause her to run the same attack. By the way, it doesn't matter if she cannot see you, which can be exploited quite badly as she'll stay in place as long as you're in her proximity. Her attack works as follows. First, she spawns three flames aimed at the player. The leftmost and rightmost flames have an angle offset of 45 degrees. The flames move at 600 map units per second and have a width and height of 32 and 64 map units respectively. Touching the flame will deal 5 to 40 damage in multiples of 5 and thrust the player upwards similar to an archer jump. 24 ticks, or 800 milliseconds after a flame attack, she will spawn 4 homing missiles. These behave similarly to the revenant missiles we described earlier, but they move faster and they are red. They move at 540 map units per second. Their width and height are 22 and 8 map units respectively and can deal 10 to 80 damage in multiples of 10. Ouch! At least the game caps the amount of red homing missiles to 9. The missiles are shot from an angle. Do not home in onto the player for the first 1 to 5 ticks, then start chasing down the player. They will stop homing after around 7 seconds. When the mother demon is killed, she will freeze for 2 seconds, let's go blood gurgling scream, spawns explosions all around her, and then gets torn in half. Brutal. So as you can see, Doom 64's demons don't just look differently, their behavior can deviate quite a bit from the originals. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was definitely a blast to work on. Once again a big shout out to Eric194 for reverse engineering Doom 64. I would also like to thank my beautiful patrons and YouTube members and give a massive shout out to the gorgeous Turbo Nerds, 19 Day, Agonizing Oral Pain, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Dunai, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andri Diklin, aka Machauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Beaks Make Me Kung, Bitcore, Bofu, Thunderstorm, Carlton Hart, Chief Quatrake, Cyprian Rusen, Arian Sista, Erwin Wolf, Francis T218, Jeffrey Catalan, Joseph Shans, Katsune Teku, Kirill Gorobets, Master Biggie, Matthias Zippert, Max Payne 67, Miltank Tiddies, Mr. Cheron, Nighthawk 71, Old Man Hen, Pete Peterse, Pix Drift, Pyro She, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Shane Larson, Space Duck, Spectre, Steak Jacobs, Steven Halustic, Tech Okami, Thomas, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Turbine 2K5, Watch Space Dandy, Who's Ace, and Zach Booker. Thank you all, see you in the next one.